Welcome to Pierce Podcast. I'm Mike. And this is Orlando. And we're on episode 261. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking about our All conversation right. recently. Are you guys prime rib people or tri-tip people? That's no, prime rib, 100%. L- let us know in the comments because... I-, I can't even believe this is a debate. Like prime rib is 100% better than any other cut of steak, for sure. <laughs> I don't know, but the fatty part, like I just, I try tip, like you get the, I don't know. Anyways. What a weird way to start the episode. I know, but you this know what? This is not a cooking channel. We took the outtakes. This is what we were talking about. We were talking about real life things before we started the podcast, you know, right. keeping it real. All right. So this is an update episode. We got a lot going on. It's been a, it's been a pretty intense last few weeks. I'm feeling the heat of Q4 uh, way sooner than I anticipated. Uh, but uh, before we talk about all Q4 stuff and all, how, how things been? Yeah, I mean, things have been actually pretty good for me. Um, I've been, we've been more consistent with our listings. Uh, I've been doing more pictures. My wife has been listing more. And that has definitely led to increased sales, right? And again, part of it is an algorithm thing, I think, as far as just listing, having the activity. And part of it too is, you know, if you've got 100 items you haven't listed, there's, there's of those 100 probably 10, 15 of them, there's people ready to buy, you know, like Mm -hmm. as soon as they go up. So the moment you start listing things, things start selling because there's people on the lookout for certain things at certain prices. And so um, it's definitely been nice doing that, getting pictures, uh, getting listings up. I definitely have not done as much garage sales as I've, uh, as I've wanted to do because of that. Um, We also had like a party that we went to this Saturday for my niece's one-year-old birthday party. And so because of those things, like I haven't been able to hit the garage sales, but because I've been listing so much, you know, the money's coming in. It's actually kind of nice because we kind of have the way we run our our business account. We have a certain amount that we want to keep in our account at all times. And as we make money, then we pull from that money to kind of pay ourselves, pay our bills, do the things that we decide to do with it and keep our account at a certain amount. So, you know, whatever that number is for you. Maybe you want to do something like that, but that's kind of because we're part-time, we can kind of do it that way. I want to make sure we have X amount of money as just capital that we can spend at any moment, where if a great deal came by, we had a big business expense, anything like that, we've got, we've got the capital for it. And then the moment our business bank account, like every month we evaluate, we don't, we don't do it like every week or anything like that, but every month as that business account builds up, then I take about 50% of that increase to buy new new inventory and the rest of it kind of pays ourselves. We pay bills, we pay things like that. So it's been nice the last couple of months to like have like a nice paycheck coming in. Now, know? are you finding newly listed stuff is selling faster than older stuff? Yeah, I you mean- You mentioned that before, but it seems yeah. to happen. No, 100%. The things that, part of it I think is just like we've talked through the kind of- The sell-through, the sell-through rate. rate and yeah. specifically how many eyes see something. Because like right now we have uh, that- I, I showed it on one of my videos that I purchased like a weird clown. I think it's a Pennywise, oh, Pennywise thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it has to go this month. Like it's, it, it is a Halloween decoration. Like somebody is going to buy it for Halloween and we've gotten a lot of low ball offers over the last couple of months, but it hasn't sold at the price we wanted it to sell for. And so part of me is thinking, I'm thinking I'm going to take this down completely and relist it in a couple of days. So it's like a new fresh listing mm-hmm. uh, because it ha- it, like it's got to sell this month. And I just worry like, is it, is it kind of like, I mean, it's not exactly like, I wonder uh, if it hurts your metrics. Like the longer you keep countering, because I find in the morning, like if I get some solid offers, but they're not exactly where I want, if I counter offer them, it's like crickets. Yeah. But if I just start accepting the sales start coming through, but I wonder if the same rule applies. If you have an item that's been listed for a while and you keep getting offers and you keep getting offers and it's, it just doesn't sell that it keeps going lower in the search. I'm sure it all does. the speculation that we do here. I'm sure it does to an extent. And just again, like the longer it's in there, like it's going to push down if there's similar items. Cause again, unless somebody's looking for that exact model and they're typing that in, if they're just typing in scary clown decorations, right. It's probably going to be the newer listings that are going to be mm. up towards the top as opposed to mine, which is now several months old. So I, I think it, it, it probably does make an impact for that. Um, but the one thing we have noticed there seems to be when we get positive feedback, we tend to have sales like pretty soon after that. There seems to be a direct correlation mm. between receiving positive feedback and more sales. You be giving you attaboys. That's kind of what it seems. Attaboys, like, here's some like, sales. Hey, good job! Like you're you're getting positive feedback because again, if if you're if you're a top rated seller, you're getting good feedback. You're the kind of sellers that eBay wants to be known for having. True, right? So I I can imagine that there's probably something. Maybe it's all just speculation. Maybe it's just coincidence. Who knows? Because we're not doing double blind controlled tests with lots of data that we're reviewing. So there's no way to know for sure. But 
uh, it seems in our anecdotal evidence, it seems that that seems to be the case. But uh, but the nice thing, uh, kind of going on a different route. So I mentioned I wasn't doing garage sales, but I woke up uh, Sunday morning. It was pretty early. It was like three o'clock or something. And my son was up. And so I was helping feed him. And so I'm up. My wife went back to bed and I'm, you know, what am I going to do? I've got a couple of options. It was my rest day. So I wasn't going to go work out. So I'm, I could either scroll around and do nothing on Instagram, social media type stuff, or I can try and be productive. So I jumped on offer up and I started looking for some of the the niches that I, and I haven't been on offer up probably in a few weeks. And I'm like, Oh, there's some good stuff in here. And like one thing led to another next thing, you know, by like eight o'clock, I'd already sent out like 10 messages to people. Nice. And you start getting some back and some people won't haggle with you and some people will. And, and today, and the nice thing was it's so hard with my schedule. Like I work all day. I'm, I'm, I'm get, I have to be to work super early, so I can't pick stuff up in the morning. By the time I get off, it's already like five. And then we either have podcasts. I've got mm-hmm. stuff out for church. I've got like, so I don't have a lot of time after school to get to, to pick stuff up, but I was able to arrange where my wife was able to, to the, today, she basically made like three or four stops and she was just picking up stuff that we arranged to buy. Right. So she went on a little, little drive today and sent me a picture and the back of the car is just stuffed full of things. So it was super awesome. I'm actually probably going to do this coming Saturday video, like a haul video of uh, my offer up stuff that I bought. And then today I I found somebody else with something. And on my way here, I, uh, I picked something up. I tried to help him out. He messaged me. He's like, Hey, are you nearby? And I'm like, I'm at the post office. Yeah. There was one that I I missed. I hope I didn't fail you. Yeah. No, there's some you definitely missed. That's the hard part with working offer up. Especially if it's like, if it's something that's been posted for like 10 days, 20 days, you're usually you're pretty yeah, good. Yeah, but you if know, it's can, like within the 24. Yeah. If somebody's like posted in the last 30 minutes, if you can't go and get it, like then it's probably going to be gone. So yeah. So a couple of tips they brought up in the directly was, and I do this too, is I have like offer up days or Craigslist days where say it's a Wednesday, that Wednesday I'll spend all day and go on, not all day, but I'll spend a good amount of time, like a couple hours. I'll go on offer up. I'll go on Facebook marketplace. I'll go on Craigslist and whatever else there is. And I'll try to set up deals. And the next I'll try to set up like 10 or 15 deals. So the next day, you know, I can plan my route. So I'm not wasting gas, I'm not wasting time. You're just hitting them up instead of just staggeredly going where you can. Now, if it's an item that, you know, is an hot item or it's just listed, you got to go. go. Like the moment that deal is, you know, made, it's time to move. Yeah. Like the one that I missed today that I kind of, I I messaged Orlando. I'm like, you wouldn't happen to be in this town (laughs) right now. Right. Uh, Because man, this guy was selling a bunch of weights, like probably $150 worth of weights for about $40. And what my plan was, I could have kept some of it and then sold the rest and still probably made like a $70 profit. And it was some weights that I was looking for. So it would have been a sweet deal. Uh, but, you know, with things like that, like you you, you got to strike when the iron's hot. No pun intended. No <laughs> weight thing. But, uh, but you know, other things, you know, I'm, I was surprised. Two of the things that I picked up, uh, one I picked up today and one my wife picked up today, were things that have been listed for a long time. And so it's it's pretty interesting to see that there are things, there are niches out there where people aren't necessarily searching. And the hard part is, how do you know? How do you know what to buy on offer up? Like, how do you know what niche to get into? Because some of them, it's just like weights right now. If you're not lucky to find somebody who doesn't know what they have and what it's worth, you're just not getting because there's this guy even messaged me. He goes, I got like seven or eight other people messaging me right now mm-hmm. on these. And I'm like, yeah, like it's going to they're going to go because th- those deals don't last. So some some niches are just oversaturated and you really just have to find your niche. Like for a while there, I was doing really good selling manga. Um, but right now it's like the last like six months on offer up Craigslist. People are trying to sell it for like new prices and it's just like, there's no money there. So it's hard. You got to find the right niches. But if you find it and you're only going to find it just by scrolling, right? Look around your house. What are things? Look in your, your eBay store. Look at things you've sold in the last, you know, 60 days and look up those items on offer up because you never know if it's a good item. You might find that or something similar to it on offer up. No, agreed. Agreed. I, I have not done an offer up or a crisis pickup in a while, but those have always been great money makers. Right. And sometimes people even know the value, but they just want to offload stuff like garage shells, like anything else. Uh, and, you know, it's kind of it's kind of nice in comparison to garage shells because you pretty much have the deal locked in. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Unless you're some shady person. And like I said, shady, by the way, it sounded like something different. But, <laughs> but you show up and you're like, I know we said 30, but would you take 20? Like, See, there is a line for me to cross. I know I people give me a hard time about my haggling. 
but you know, I do have certain limits to my haggling. There, there is a line he won't cross, I guess, which, uh, which gives me a little bit of faith. And uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, the, the, honestly, even going back to that idea you mentioned, I mean, I think part of it we've talked in the past. Part of it is a, a kind of a cultural thing when it comes to to haggling and and based off of just how you grew up, how you were raised, mm-hmm. and some true, people, true. some people, and some communities, right? Like even even within a city, even within a, a town, right? Like different communities within areas are going to have different views on how to to haggle, right? Like some people, I know a lot of people who they go into a used car dealership or a car dealership and they're going to pay whatever ticket price is because they're just not comfortable. Which is so wild to me, right? Because because you really can't usually go into Walmart and 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 haggle there, right? So everybody kind of thinks like, well, it's all retail prices, and so just depending on your your paradigm and your perspective, and so it's easy for some people to be like almost offended, right, by saying like, oh, you're haggling too hard. When it's like, I could see why that would offend somebody, and that might even offend the person you're trying to negotiate with, but um, but other people might almost find it maybe offensive if you don't like not in the same way, but almost like judgmental of you, like how foolish this person is, right, for not trying to. To, to haggle. I mean, we, my wife and I went to Nepal and that was part of their thing. I mean, that kind of goes along with what you mentioned earlier about, you know, taking a deal first thing in the morning on eBay. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have a belief system there. Uh, the, the shopkeepers that the first sale of the day is like a lucky sale huh. and it brings in luck for the rest of the day. And so people go out in that culture and they, they do most of their haggling in the morning. You're going to get the best deals. And so as it gets close to the end of the day, they're not going to be willing to haggle. So like everywhere has got different perspectives, different beliefs, different views on it. Uh, so, you know, you just got to be aware of that and uh, and know that we're not trying to offend anybody by saying like, hey, you said 30, would you take 25? Like they could say no. And we're either going to say, all right, walk away or we'll take the deal that they they offered. And I always try to walk away with both of us smiling. Like I, I, I can only think of maybe twice where somebody like gave me this look like, oh, I, I, I shouldn't have given you that deal. But like twice out of thousands of times, you know, and I'll share some today about how some things ended. It's pretty interesting at garage sales. So uh, I will say Christmas sales are picking up now. It's it is crazy. I wish I had all the Q4 toys right now. I wish they were out there. But, you know, the other day I went to some off price stores and I found some items that were ranked less than 2000 on Amazon. And I listed it on Amazon and within hours they all sold, which is which is wild to me because that's right now. I can only imagine the velocity of those items and when you know we get to November, mid-November, because you get to the point in Q4 where you can actually list stuff even before you buy it and it will sell by the time you're checking out. And I, I strongly recommend not doing that because you know things can always happen. You might drop something or the store might limit how many you're buying. I mean, you, you got to be careful. But I was just kind of shocked the other day. Uh, I just... I, it was, I, you know, I stumbled upon something and, and the funny thing was I, I started going to every single store looking for it and yeah, it, it wasn't there. So obviously it was a scarce item that I picked up. Also, uh, I was trying to pick up a van for Q4. It's not looking good. The market's just, I went to a rental place that I went to last year and they're like, yeah, um, we'll have a problem. Uh, it seems that almost uh, all the vans, the cargo vans are being rented out by people that work for Amazon. I was like, oh. All right. Well, nice. if you uh, if you let me store the stuff that's currently in my uh, in my trailer somewhere here, uh, you can you can take my trailer. No, I was gonna ask you that. I was gonna yeah. go there eventually. Yeah, or maybe rent it from you. No, you know? man. Just is. I mean, uh, trailer. Those kind of trailers, like the tires are like thirty bucks each on them, and they they only last like because you know how much I drive. Like part of a season. Yeah. Like you'd be you'd be good for your for your drive, but like you'd probably have to replace them before or after. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. That that would be the only thing. But uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's one option, right? Like right now, used vehicles even. So renting is one thing. But even if you wanted to buy something, like it's just so difficult to do. So no, I was looking to buy too. And it was like 30% above regular price. And so I just, I can't, you know, and then there's all that, ha- you know, in the middle of Q4, I don't want to buy something. And then I come back and it doesn't pass smog. It's the thing we have in California that is outrageous. Or... You know, there, there's something wrong with the transmission within a couple of weeks or there's something repaired. Like, I, I just don't have the time during Q4 uh, to deal with it. And so I, I really got to finalize these plans. Uh, they they did tell me it was weird. This lady was like, check Expedia every day because if somebody cancels, the prices will drop. So it's it's a supply and demand. How thing. much you normally, if you don't mind, uh, how much you normally end up spending on uh, on vans during 
during Q4. So I spent about 1860. All right. Which which wasn't too bad. I, I mean, I made that money pretty quick. And like, I think when I say it was a week and a half of uh, FBA, I was able to make that back before even December hit. Uh, but again, it's, you know, I, I was looking at, and the trailer, you know, trailer, there, there could be money. I know you've been looking at some trailers. Yeah, I was going to mention to you. So like, you know, if you're spending close to two grand a year already on a cargo van, I, uh, I mean, I have mine, which is relatively small. It's probably got about the storage of a cargo van. But I saw one today on OfferUp that was like super nice. Oh, here, I mean, here it is, six foot, six foot by twelve foot huh. for title. I mean, title in hand. Look at that; it's got side door on it. This probably has like the, the storage of like two and a half to three cargo vans, right? And then you don't have to worry about ever renting. You've got something solid, right? right? And true, you could true. even use it for storage. You could do all kinds. Like you could do like a. Basically, in the states, and I got the, I got like the that. space where I can keep it. Yeah, like it's so, not a big deal. So that's one of those things. Like, and and again, like I mean, not financial advice, but one of the nice things about buying something like that is you got the tax write off, right? So yeah, true, true. You've mentioned, and I agree. Like, I don't know if I'd want another vehicle where you're paying for registration, you're paying for the maintenance, you're paying for all that, or something like a trailer. You're replacing tires every once in a while, but it's it's like a one time registration fee usually, and mm-hmm. you know you're good to go. So. Um, I mean, that might be something to consider is uh, is looking at possibly getting a trailer or something like that that you could uh, use because, yeah, in one or two Q4s, I mean, think about it. We've been doing this. This this is what our third yeah. or fourth. Is that fourth? Yeah. I think this is our fourth Q4 yeah, since, since we started the podcast. The podcast yeah. Right. So just a couple more. And that thing is paid for. The tax write off alone is probably going to be worth it. And then bing, bang, boom, you're good to go. Right. I know. I know. But I know, let's say in eight months, that trailer is probably going to be. The price is going to be three fourths of that, right? No, 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 no. You don't no, think no. so? No way. Th- that trailer right there, trailer prices, and that's this is something I know from buying my trailer. Trailer prices hold. They hold really like the difference between a new and a used trailer is like maybe 10, 15 percent. And I'm talking like used, like 10 years used. Interesting. Right. Like trailer okay. prices, they really don't go down because there's unlike cars, they don't really have like they don't really wear out. I mean, you've got to replace tires. Maybe if you're like putting tons and tons of miles on it, you you might have to end up replacing an axle or something might break, but you're not worrying about an engine. You're not worrying about transmission. You're not worrying about all of those things, right? It's like yeah. such a simple, simple thing and all they're right. built well. You, you might be, you might be selling me on it. We'll yeah. see. Yeah. Hit them up on offer up after this, man. We'll see. <laughs> I, I, I got to give it a couple of, I can, I just can't on impulse. I have to like, think about it. Just write out the pros and cons. How much would it cost you to rent this, uh, this year versus buying this? What's the benefit taxes? You'd, you'd, you'd figure it out in about 10 minutes. All right. Now, uh, the other thing that's been interesting is I'm now expanding as to what my helper does. So as far as listening. So my helper, and I always say this, when you're hiring someone to take pictures and list for you, start with the thing you're really good at yourself doing. Right. So, for example, the easiest thing that I'm really good at taking pictures and listing are buckles. So I started having her do buckles. And then after I went to buckles, I went to shoes because shoes are pretty easy. And I do shoes pretty well. I I take pride in my pictures, my listings. And then after the shoes, uh, it's clothing. Right. And jackets and so on. And then now, what do you think is the one thing outside of VCRs that I can't stand listing? We we made a video on these. Legos? Lego. Mm. I just, I can't yeah, tell I you. It's not Legos, right? It's Lego. Yeah. It's, it's that the, is the plural. It is. It is. Yeah. It's the plural Lego. Nice. So I was like, I had all these Legos. I, I literally have probably 50 pounds of Lego. No, more than that. Like 80 pounds of Legos that have just been sitting in bins, mm. you know, and I keep sourcing them and I knew it was I'll bad. I'll buy them from you on a discount. They're already, they're already listed oh. or not listed. They're already like they're ready to be listed. Oh, okay. well, I'm sorry, go. man. But, he, but here's the thing. I knew it got bad when I was at a garage sale. And I could have bought some Legos for a deal and I didn't. And I'm like, this is bad because I'm passing up on profit because I just don't want to hassle with it. So what was awesome is we already created a YouTube video and I was kind of weird to saying, hey, you know, we have, you know, there's this YouTube video. So I I, I didn't I didn't do that. Like, I, I just I, I just couldn't do it. I don't know. I just think it'd be, it'd be weird if she started listening and then she hears me talking about her on the podcast. Would that be weird? I've only said good things, though. Oh, your helper? Mm-hmm. No. I don't know. I don't know. But it was really simple to explain because here's the thing. When you have to create something to explain to somebody or, you know, on you, whenever you're creating YouTube, some of you that listen to us have your own YouTube channels. 
you know you got to break stuff down really well, right? So people can understand. So it was easy for me to explain to my helper within five minutes. So she's taking care of all the Lego pieces and those are going to be listed for Q4. And so again, I've always recommended this. If there are items you know are profitable, but you just hate listing them, you hate you know, taking the time to clean them up or take pictures or do any of that, and you have a good amount, you have the ability to source these items, maybe look into a helper, maybe, you know, a relative, a good friend of the family, uh, somebody, you know, and maybe it's just a Q4 thing, but I, I think that definitely would be helpful. Yeah, it's good so, stuff, man. All right. You have any random stories here? Um, kind of random. So when I was at the, the uh, birthday party for my niece, it was uh, up like where I used to live. So about three hours north of where we're at now. And uh, there's a lot of family friends there. And one of the family friends that's there, I've, I've known the guy for since I've married my wife. So for like the last 11 years, I've known this guy and super cool guy. I know his family and I've gone on vacations with them and stuff. And one of the things that's cool is he's had some interesting hobbies over the years. And I always talk to him about his hobbies. And, you know, I don't want to give it go into his personal stuff because I might actually have him on at some point, either on the show or on like a, one of my, my Saturday videos or something to kind of talk about what he does now. Uh, but he, he had some health issues and so he's no longer able to work. He's on like disability, uh, but he's been able to turn those hobbies that he's into those niches that he knows really well. And he started buying and selling on eBay. So he oh, buys nice. things on eBay and is able to flip them. And then he's doing some local deals, Craigslist offer up that kind of stuff. And I was just talking to him for a little bit at the, at the party. And I was just amazed. Like he's, he's, he's making significantly more than I'm making. And this is his first year. He's like, just gotten into it and he is just killing it on ebay because but he, he knew knows his niche right that's that's what that's it is like he knows like he sees something and he can instantly tell like he can see a lot of stuff within his his, his niche and he just knows like i can get x amount for all this stuff and so he knows what to buy it for he knows how to break things into pieces he knows how to bundle stuff and so he is just killing it and it's just kind of cool to see somebody who and it, and it's not like he doesn't listen to the podcast i don't think maybe he does uh but i don't think he re he's probably heard one or two episodes um but it's not like he intended like i'm gonna be a reseller mm -hmm. but he just for the sake of his family he needed to he couldn't work anymore and he still needed to be able to bring in some money and he's been able to make a killing on ebay and so i mean i was talking to him a little bit about tax stuff and things like that and businesses and bookkeeping and but just to see how eBay can change somebody's life. And mm -hmm. like, sometimes I feel like I'm almost like an evangelist for eBay to people, but it's cool. Well, when you, that'll balance out what I got to see later. So okay. that's good. But it's kind of cool when I see people who I, I never tried to convince him to do eBay. And I think he's probably on and off throughout the years. Like, you know, how like some people dabble in it. Like if you're in mm -hmm. a hobby, a lot of times people in hobbies will occasionally flip things here and there. But like he just dove in head first and is just doing amazing with it. And so it's just kind of cool to see this isn't like this isn't me coming beside somebody and encouraging them to try eBay, which I've done a couple of times and then watch people, you know, buy a couple of VCRs and then decide not to list them. And then that's that, right? Mm -hmm. This is somebody who's, who's making more than I make in a year off of eBay now, just because he knows his niche really well. And so just kind of an encouragement to people out there that, you know, you might think that this is really hard or that, and, and it can be, it can be challenging. It's a lot of work, but if you find something that you're passionate about, you can probably find a way to make money. Now, some things are hard, right? Like if you're like, I'm really passionate about weights, beanie babies, right? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay. um, I'm really passionate about weights, but I, you know, I just can't get them now. Like the price, it's a saturated market, but even in there, like if you're, if you're, if you know more than anybody else, you're still going to be able to find deals. You're still going to be able to make the right connections and make things work. Agreed. And it goes back to something I've always said. I know for a fact there are, thousands of eBay sellers that make way more money than any YouTube influencer out there. And, and they're just behind the scenes. Like this is what they do. Right. And, and, you know, you and I have talked about that. Like sometimes I've, I've said, you know, what if we just, and, and we don't plan on doing this, but what if I just walked away from Pierce podcast, I'm a hundred percent sure I'd be able to scale my business even more. I mean, I've been able to scale it. I mean, you look at the growth uh, from, you know, when we first started being in a condo, you know, only having, I think it was like, a thousand items, you know, and, and, and now, you know, have a property, have full storage and have a helper. And, you know, you can still, it, it, it just takes longer, right. When you want to do both and be in both worlds. But I think that's a great leeway before we get to more random stories to talk about buymeacoffee.com slash pure hustle. So if you haven't yet, uh, we keep getting members signing up, right? No, it's been really nice. And probably part of that is, uh, 
we've mentioned having an upcoming Zoom, which um, probably in the next couple of weeks, we'll we'll send something out to to all the people who are supporters of ours on Buy Me a Coffee, because uh, we're definitely wanting to have a, a Zoom meeting this month in October and just a chance to chat with and talk to the people who who support us financially. Um, we are beyond grateful. All of our content, we don't hide any of it behind a paywall, right? But when it comes to just spending an extra some hangout time with some people and getting a chance to know some people, hear their stories. We look hear, forward to it. Yeah, I mean, get advice getting from to them. know who's yeah. out there and who's supporting us. And, yeah. and you know, it's not in real life for there's still a screen. Now, eventually we'll do a virtual meetup. I'm not virtual meetup. We'll do a real meetup. I just, who knows when. Yeah, our last and, meetup, our our first and last meetup was <laughs> was pretty awesome. But yeah, we'll have to. Did we only have one? Yeah, we just had we just had one like official meetup. Now we've we've met up with other resellers, you know, here and there. Uh, but, but yeah, it was a bash. The one we went to, we had a good amount of people. Yeah, we did. Uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It was it neat was. getting to actually meet some people, and it was cool because we talked reselling, but like a lot of it was just talking life, right? Like yeah, just hanging out awesome. with people and yeah. being around like minded people. But all that to say, um, buy me a coffee is is your way of supporting Pure Hustle Podcast. If you choose to say, hey, you know, Pure Hustle Podcast is providing some value, uh, you can sign up for like a reoccurring monthly membership. You can do a one time donation. Anything you want. Uh, but it's just a, a a way for you to to let us know that what we're doing is valuable and to keep doing it and putting out more content because uh, it is it it does take a lot of time. I mean, I probably lost a couple offer up deals today, right? Just because I had to come here. Which again, we love doing this. But uh, we, uh, extra special thank you to all of you who uh, who provide us encouragement both through reviews, right, on on iTunes, comments on uh, YouTube, and through Buy Me a Coffee. Yeah, I really appreciate all of you. So again, buymeacoffee.com slash pure hustle. Link is below. Thank you all for your support. All right. So I got I, I got a few things here, but I'm gonna try to go through them. I do want to follow up on the buddy story. Remember the buddy story? Yeah. So for those of you who uh listened to that episode, just let us know in the, the in the comments that uh we're still your buddies. That so, Orlando is still your number one buddy. So there was a guy, in case you haven't listened to our episode before, real quick, there was a guy that kept messaging me and he kept saying, hey, buddy, would, would you sell this to me for this? Would you sell it? Hey, buddy, God bless you. Buddy, 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 buddy. Probably 25 messages. And then he got another account and he started sending messages on that other account. So I never blocked him because I, I, I really didn't believe he was malicious, especially when Mike goes, well... You know, was it a translation thing? And it, I think it was because he did message me at times in Spanish, right? And if he says amigo, he's not trying to be condescending. And maybe he wasn't even trying to be condescending with saying buddy, but I have my own issues with that word. So he kept, he, I just ignored him and he kept sending me offers and offers and offers. And I just kept counting and offering the same price, the same price. And I think after 13, he finally gave in and gave me the price I wanted. But then within moments, he sends me another offer. It was a Harley vest for like 90% off the retail price. And I'm like, are we doing this again? But I sent it out. Everything's all good. Just want to let you know, not everybody is out there to get us. Sometimes it feels like that. I think this person, whatever reason, you know, what it just bothered me was all you needed to do is come up with five or $10 and we would have had a deal. Right. And so I stuck to my guns on that. All right. Also, I, do you ever get random messages like your stuff is fake or you're never going to sell that? Do you, do you get those recently? Um, I haven't gotten one in a long time, uh, but I definitely have had people, you know, that's not a real Lululemon jacket. And it's like, well, I got this from the Lululemon store. So thank you. But I just think about the amount of effort it takes to send it. Now, I have I've, I have it, there have been people who've been helpful. Maybe maybe they weren't necessarily trying to be helpful. They were being snarky. But I have had people say like, that's a woman's you can tell or that's a man's because of the stitching on the this and that and they know their brand really well and it's like oh i guess that's a unique thing that that brand does uh and sweet i'll change my listing right so i've had i've had that happen uh but not recently you've had that recently oh uh, yeah so i'm trying to find the message right now uh no yeah i just got a good message from somebody that i listed something and it was an error see so it's not uh, yes yeah, so i'm going up to the microphone if you're listening to podcast mike was making sure i got on the microphone so I did get, I just got a message. Like you said, that is helpful. I had listed something and they said, I do also, oh no, they weren't helpful. They just want to buy more stuff, which is helpful too. But so the most helpful. So this individual, so I had this vintage like polo uh, shirt and it was vintage and I knew it was vintage for several reasons. I sell vintage clothes all the time. So I can spot when it's a fake, 
On top of that, it was in a closet of somebody who had clothing from the 80s and 90s that was just sitting there for a long time. So unless they bought a fake one in the 80s and 90s, it was pretty legit. So I get this message and I thought it was weird because I get messages all the time like, hey, that's a fake. Hey, that's a reproduction. And I always just ignore them because to me, unless you 100% can tell me in that message how it is and I can look it up, I'm just not going to listen to the person. Because I am a big believer that people only make fakes of items that can be highly reproduced, right? People aren't going to make, you know, uh, a counterfeit. Let's I'm just throwing something that's in in inner space here. They're not going to make a a counterfeit Fisher Price car wash toy for kids, right? Unless it's mass produced. They're not going to make, you know, a counterfeit Harley shirt. That you know is from San Diego, California, right? There, there, there is no, there is no purpose in in doing that. So that's why I ignore those. But this individual, it was kind of weird because, I, you know, I, I, my, my list, my lister, the, the problem I've had is we use Photo Room, but have you ever had it where Photo Room just completely eliminates everything and it, there's like two little pieces left? Like it'll do that with me with a uh, size, like size tags or like brand name tags, which is not a yeah. big deal. You've got to have contrast between the back. Some kind of contrast between the background and the item. Yeah. So if it's if it's a, a light colored thing by light colored thing, it could definitely take out. Yeah. So this was this was a white shirt and it and it took it all out. And so I'm I kind of didn't like how it looked, but I kept it up there because I'm like, you know, sometimes when you have a helper, you gotta be willing to let go and let people just do what they gotta do and just go with it because things will still sell. Well, the message I get is it seems you try to highly alter this tag. I'm reporting you to eBay. I'm like, what? Like, what am I supposed to do with that? Like, I even thought about it. I'm like, should I call eBay and let them know something? But then I'm like, what am I going to tell eBay? Like, all I did is is photo room it. I didn't Photoshop it. I photo roomed it. Yeah, but that's still altering a picture, technically. Yeah, but to to that effect, I don't know. It just it just kind of it just it just ah, it just bothered me because I get messages because I sell vintage stuff all the time. And I know some of them are just people that are just haters or sometimes there are people that didn't get the deal they wanted. And so, you know, their, their last strike is to tell me that something isn't real or something that's fake. All right. Are we ready to talk about my interesting garage sale encounters this last weekend? Let's hear it. All right. So if you haven't caught my latest garage sale video, click the banner here. I know I love giving Mike more work when he does the videos. Yeah. Uh, okay. uh, the funniest part is sometimes I don't put those in. Okay. So you're like, click the banner and it's not there. <laughs> All right, well, only if I remember. Okay, so it, it's a two thousand uh, dollar day garage sale morning haul. Okay, so I didn't share all this in in the video uh, just because I, you know, I wanted to edit. I didn't want to put too much, but I got to tell you, the interactions I had were strange. And so my biggest haul of that day, if you watch the video, was I, I, I ended up with all this camcorder equipment and and tapes and all the, I mean, tons of thousand dollars. And I only spent $65 on everything. But here's the funny thing. I always recommend to people when you make a good deal, I know it's going to sound weird. Find something that's not super lucrative, but you're still make profit and go, Hey, do you mind just throwing this in? Like just an afterthought. Are right, you ever do that? You're going to be like, what are you doing? Oh, Orlando? Man, I don't know. I mean, you got to read the room. You got to read the person after you've already agreed on a price. Yeah, I know. I already bought it. And then I said, oh, you know what? I mean, I've done this before. Like this last time there was a bag for a vintage damn post boots. Like you keep storing your cowboy boots. And earlier I had mentioned, hey, do you happen to have any cowboy boots? I see this bag. She's like, no, but it's a pretty sweet bag. I'm like, yeah, it's an awesome bag. I just wish she had boots. And then at the end, after we made the deal, you know, I could read her, you know, her expression. And and I said, hey. What, what what can we do with can I just throw these in? And she's like, Yeah, sure. I like you. I'm like, oh, that's nice. I have a boyfriend, but I do like you. Whoa. And I was like, So the moral of the story <laughs> is you just gotta do some uh some eyebrows, maybe a little wink here. I, I didn't I didn't know how to respond. And then some other guy goes, Hey, I heard that. I know her boyfriend. And he was kind of joking, but it was kind of like this, like, bro. And I was like, Okay, well. You're awesome too. Like I don't know what else to say. You know, I just smiled and you used your beard appeal to uh <laughs> to get that price down. I maybe that's why I got the great deal. I don't know what the great deal was, but it was just awkward. So I, I leave that one and I'm like, all right, now I go to the state sale. You see in the video, I go to the state sale. 
And the lady there, I knew it was going to go bad because the person that initially was going to, you know, tell me how much everything was going to be worth it had passed it off to another individual. But it was so weird. So if you watch the video, they expected me to pay $80 for uh, a leather jacket. And it was it was a, you know, it was a bomber leather jacket, but it wasn't L.O. Bean. It wasn't, you know, a shot jacket. It wasn't anything. It was it was one that was made by American Express. Okay, so that that's a that's gonna be a long haul kind of item where you listen and you just wait for the right buyer. It was a brand new unbox, Bergano shoes, brand new unbox, Mafiso shoes. These are bolos by by the way. Some Salvador Ferragamo shoes, uh, a glove, a hat, so a few things. And in my mind, I was thinking 25 bucks, right? And and you just watch the video. She tells me eighty, I'm like eighty. And you know, I, I already got used to haggling that morning. Like I was getting good deals, and she would not budge. If you catch the video, she wouldn't budge. But here's the thing. She tells me this weird thing. It's not in the YouTube video. She goes, "Hey, listen. There's law enforcement everywhere, and there are cameras throughout the entire place. And I think they want me to make sure I sell everything for the right price." I was like, "What?" Like what? What? Like in my head, I'm like, I don't understand. So she might have been like a little bit out there, is what you're saying? Like, did, yeah. Well, did she? What, like, were we doing something shady by getting a deal? Like, I, I don't understand. And where were these cameras? And were these cameras watching me do my Instagram videos? So and- either one of two things happened. I think either one, she's trying to like subtly put you on notice, like, hey, like if you're thinking about stealing any of this stuff, don't. <laughs> or two, she's like. uh and again, I don't know. I don't know the situation, but maybe she's like beautiful mind status. You know what I'm saying? Of like, you know, like maybe, maybe, you know. What you're saying is crazy. No, I wouldn't say that. I'm just saying like. <laughs> Conspiracy minded. Yeah. Like, you know, like maybe like maybe. Yeah. You never know. Like, I, you know, I know people who are like that. Great people. But, you know, like everything is, you know, you know, they're being watched. It just and- it was the I've never had anybody. Give me the excuse that they couldn't sell things for cheaper because there are police cameras they were in law enforcement. And so I was like, all right, whatever. And then and she's like, hey, this is a great deal. These are cheaper than thrift store prices. And so I didn't put this in the video because I just didn't. I don't think I recorded this part. I kind of lost my cool a little bit. I'm like, these are not thrift store prices. She's like, I'm not here to argue with you. And I'm like, hey, see, that's why you should be recording everything. because This stuff is good stuff, man. Yeah, but I, I don't want to put people on blast either. You know, so I don't know. Should I have put that in the video? Should I have? I don't know. Yeah. Always be recording, man. Record everything. So so then, uh, you know, I walk away and I go the next day and I do an Instagram story. Right. So make sure you're following us on Instagram if it's working at least and and make sure to watch our Instagram stories. And I post that I went the next day and because she told me the next day I could get a better deal. So I show up the next day and the stuff is gone. Like the Mephisto shoes somebody picked up and the jacket was gone. A lot of other stuff was gone. So I left and then somebody watches a story and, and shout out to you. I got no, nothing against you. I think you're awesome. I, I really think you got a sweet deal. They say, hey, Orlando, just to let you know that pair of Bergano shoes, I ended up picking up right after you left. I'm like, when? Today or yesterday? He goes, oh, yeah, yesterday. Right after you left, I got the Bergano shoes for a dollar. A dollar. And I'm like, was it this lady? And he's like, no, no, it was, it was this other lady here. And I'm like, oh, okay, a dollar. So a couple of things I pulled away from that is, again, you got to read people. I, I knew that this lady I was going to do the price was going to cause me trouble. So what would I have done if I could replay that scenario? I would have put everything on the whole table. And I would have waited until that lady was like gone and disappeared and then pulled it off the whole table and then tried to negotiate. That was my fail. I, I just, I wasn't thinking outside the box. Okay. The other thing is, and, and I'm keeping it real is, you know, a lot of, it's funny cause we get comments sometimes like, Hey, you guys don't tell us everything you pick up. Like your offer up, you're insane. Why? Mm-hmm. Well, what was awesome is that this listener said <laughs> in their DM said, Hey, Orlando, I got these for a dollar. And it's funny because I learned about Bergano shoes from you. And I'm like, all right. Well, you know, and then that, that's a scenario. Like sometimes I'm willing to share thrift store finds. I'm willing to share garage to find. It does not bother me because again, it's all about getting out there who gets there first and so on. And there's plenty. 
But let's say it was retail arbitrage and this item was at Ross. How many Rosses are in San Diego? Yeah, quite a few. Right? Let's say there's 12. You go to LA, there's like 40 to 50. Okay. You go to parts of Arizona, there's, you know, same amount. So you, I could single handedly, even with our small 25,000, which we appreciate every single one of you followers on Instagram, almost 6K subscribers on YouTube, uh, you know, I don't know, close to 10K on, on that listens to podcasts, okay, at different times. I don't know. We're, we're somewhere out there, right? I don't even know where we're at anymore. All it takes is me saying, hey, there's this hot item to pick up for Q4 and the market is done. It's done. And that happened before a couple of years ago with Millennial Monopoly. Uh, it's happened before with uh, Tommy Bahama is one that people always talk about. Uh, so this is why we're careful. I just and again, I don't mind sharing. Like I, I dropped my feet, so I dropped. Uh, you know, New Era hat was one of the items I dropped. You know, the Bergano shoes, no problem. But when it becomes et- retail arbitrage, when you begin to have a following, it does become an issue, right? So. All right. So that was a, uh, that was an interesting morning. I just want to share some of the behind the scenes uh, negotiation or weirdness that happened. I like it. So, all right. Hey, before we move on to our next section, I uh, wanted to talk about American I am all set up for Q4. I have my bubble wrap. I have my eBay shipping supplies, but I got to tell you, even if I run out of bubble wrap, I know that I'll get that bubble wrap really fast next day, two day, uh, I can even do local pickup if there's a warehouse near and it's a great deal. And if you have been listening to the podcast for a while, now we do have a promo code and it is Pure Hustle Podcast. Does it have to be lowercase? It's all lowercase. Does it matter? Probably. All right. So all lowercase, Pure Hustle Podcast. And we've already had a lot of people DM us saying, hey. All one word. All one word. Pure all one podcast. word. Pure Hustle Podcast. And saying, hey, I needed this bubble wrap and I got it pretty quick. And again, American Bubble Boy, they're a great company and they are always willing to make things right if if things don't happen. But man, they are consistent about getting things out on time and getting you a great deal. So again, check out AmericanBubbleBoy.com, go to the link below and use our promo code. All right. Also, if you haven't been following us on social media, but before we do that, I got to accept this real quick. See, some of the sometimes while we're doing the podcast, we're still working, right? Can I we mean, get the gotta, thing here? Is it coming? I don't know. There, there it is. We go. Bada bing, bada bing, bada boom. A buckle. Was it a good sell? Yeah, it was a buckle. I, I paid like two bucks, sold for 25. Hey, not so bad. I'll take it. It's a, some good margins. All right. So, social media, in case, you know, things go down, we are on so many multiple platforms. Uh, we are on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok as Pure Hustle Podcast. You know, it's kind of funny when uh, Instagram and Facebook went down, like all the TikTok people were like, ha, like we're good. And that's a platform we've kept alive, you know, and, and maybe maybe we'll have to go back there. You never know. You know, maybe one day they'll say you guys talk about reselling and we don't know if that's OK. So we're banned. PHP no more. And we'll end up on TikTok. So uh, you can also find us on Twitter. Uh, Pure Hustle Cast. And uh, if you ever want us to give us a call, we do have a phone call that came in and we're going to share that on our next episode. Uh, our next episode is going to be about. Why do people quit reselling? Mm. Something to that effect. So if you're on the verge, if you're on the precipice of saying, I'm done with this reselling, or you're like, hey, I want to jump full time, strongly encourage you to check out our next podcast. It's good. I like it. So again, you can give us a call 619-738-1170 at 619-738-1170 or shoot us an email, podcast at gmail.com. That's podcast at gmail.com. And I always love the comments on YouTube where like, hey, we've been listening to podcasts the whole time and now we jumped over to YouTube and... It's kind of interesting watching you guys yeah. or it's funny or. Yeah. And they're like, you're so much more handsome than we thought. You know, I'm just kidding. People don't say that, but you know, you could, that'd make me feel good. There you go. So check us out on YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure to smash the like button, hit that bell notification. You know, we're almost at 6k. I mean, how awesome would it be to have some really good numbers by the end of the year? Uh, and our podcast keeps growing. So thank you for all of you for your support. Thank you for your iTunes reviews. All of that helps every single time. Uh, and any engagement, whether you comment on the video, whether you, you know, hit that like button, uh, not to dislike the like button always helps us out. So thank you all for your support. All right. Are we ready to talk about some, uh, reseller topics? Oh, are you kidding oh, me? No, I it was working it. just fine. It was, yeah. I even tested it before the, I'm telling you guys, 
I, I keep saying I'm going to get another better soundboard and eventually I will, you know, it, it's going to happen. But uh, breaking news, this just in, my soundboard still doesn't work. I don't know why I haven't fixed it yet, but Orlando's getting notifications on eBay. Somebody just paid. People are paying. Things are going good. What's happening in the reselling world? All right. few things. So if you haven't had a chance yet, make sure to, to go on the eBay seller check-ins. They used to be just for a certain amount uh, or certain, I don't know what they were, like influencers, whatever, but now it's open to everybody. So check out your eBay messages so you can check in. And I there wasn't much on this last one. I, it was just a recap of the eBay fall seller update, which we already discussed on a previous podcast. So check that podcast out. Uh, but there's something that they said in there that, that I, there's a few things, uh, dealing with Terapeak. So pretty soon. And, it, and you know, I'm not a fan when eBay rolls things out, but you don't have access to it yet. You know, it's kind of like the white background. Remember we saw the eBay open. What was it like a year till we finally saw it? Yeah. It wasn't quite that. Maybe it was that long. It was they, a long they, time. Like, it was available for some people ahead of time. You could get like early access beta use. Yeah, and it was like only the first picture, and yeah. then it changed. So I understand the whole use of beta use, but they're looking to streamline uh, TerraPick with eBay listings, right? And so the nice thing about that is all the research will, will be on there. You know, like one of the things I liked is I always go to TerraPick to see if people charge shipping for a certain item. And so it tells you what percentage of people charge shipping. So let's say it's 17% charge shipping. Well, you know that if you want to be competitive, you probably need to do free shipping. The only one I won't do is the trending price. I always find that trending price is like 75% of what I would sell an item at. Mm. Right. So, but I think that's great. The only, the one thing I didn't like was I, I actually asked a question. I said, Hey, are we going to get the SEO search back? So those of you that haven't heard about the SEO search, Terrapic used to do a thing. If you found an item, let's say it was a rain spooner shirt, you could type in rain spooner and it would give you all the top words that people use with that listing to get higher, uh, you know, searches in Google. Right. And that kind of went away. So they said they weren't planning on doing that either. I also didn't hear about, we've always talked about, it'd be nice if when you search things on eBay, when you search solds, like if you could get 365 days a year, like that would be nice. Or when things are selling really well or at what price, I mean, maybe it's coming in the future. I can't imagine that the, uh, that the, the data takes that much space like, i mean the storage space has gotten so inexpensive now and i get that like that if they're running the servers they've got to pay per megabyte right but they're buying in such amount that i mean data just the data like even not pictures like even if they just had this item sold maybe just the front picture it can't take up that much data i mean i could see how pictures take up and why they only do 90 days but as far as this item right if it's a if it's a g2 pin Right. They should be able to easily show solds for a long period of time because when it's basically just text, we're talking like kilobytes, right? Like they could mm-hmm. they could compress it so small. There's I, I don't see why, but maybe again, I'm not an IT person, so maybe there's a reason why why they cut it off at that amount. But I would just imagine that they could probably let's increase this by a few thousand terabytes and we could have a year worth of data. Yeah, it'd be it would be beautiful. Now, here's the interesting, and before I say anything. Is, you know, I may or may not have an eBay tattoo. I love eBay. eBay is the reason I was able to go full time. So, you know where this is going. <laughs> Dude, the September check in in the chat, people were brutal. What do you think they were brutal? What, what is the latest update that people probably weren't happy about? The, uh, the pay per click, uh, yes. ads. What, what is it called? Promoted listings. At- advanced right yeah, or something like that and it's like if you have regular promoted listings it's promoted listing standard and man ebay was just people are like you don't care about sellers you know you're just, you only make money now off of sellers not of what is being sold i mean people weren't having it and the problem i had is a that i, I don't, i've said this for, for a long time and i'll keep saying this i i'm not a hundred percent sure if everybody that is on the executive team or in a certain levels at eBay actually resells, like actually understands how this affects and how, especially individuals in the secondary market, see things like pay-per-click or, you know, a promotion, a promoted listings advance or whatever it is. Uh, to me, like I, I will, I refuse to use it. I will not use it. On principle one too, I sell secondary unique items that 
I don't think I need to, right? If I sold like retail arbitrage or items that were from like Alibaba or something, then obviously I would have to bid for the top spot because I'd have a lot of competition. But I got to tell you, th- this is, it's a bad PR move on eBay's part. That's just, that's my, my, my personal thoughts in the sense that it's like Amazon. And I'm not saying eBay needs to be like this, but Amazon, when they do things, they just, they just do it. Right. And like the Amazon's had pay-per-click for a long time. Maybe from the beginning. Yeah, the thing is, it's just a different. It's a different platform, right? Like everybody compares Amazon to eBay because they both sell things. But I mean, that's kind of like comparing, you know, Coach to your a, a, a convenience store, a gas station. Like both sell items, right? But like they're very different markets. The way they sell things, how they or or a, a car lot with a with a, a thrift store, right? Like the, the the models are different. How they get their inventory is different. The the, the whole structure is different. And so I, I don't like the idea of eBay trying to say like, Hey, this works for Amazon because the, the clientele is different, but the system is different. It's a logistics company, right? Like all of those things are very different. Uh, so yeah, I would, I would hope that this is like you said, a bad PR move maybe, but here's the thing. I would imagine they've done their research. I'm imagine they oh, realize there's going to be there's going to be a fallout. There's going to be people who are upset. There's going to be some people who walk away. There's going to maybe maybe they'll recognize six months down the road. We've lost we've lost money on this. This was a bad move for us. But they also probably know, hey, people are going to be upset, but we're going to make more money and we might lose some people and our bottom line is going to be higher. So they're they're probably not going to lose money on this. They might lose some sellers, but. They're yeah, willing to I mean, take that they, risk, they you know? didn't lose me, you know, I, but it's it's interesting because, you know, I, I shared this on Instagram. I don't know if you, you saw that post where like, do you know that buyers, when they buy something, eBay will tell them they have four days to pay. Oh, yeah. So that's awful. Like, like what, what? Like, I thought the whole talk in in the eBay open that we had was that they we're doing away with that, that we're working to make sure that people pay right away. And then this is the message that people are being sent. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, again, I, I'm not, I'm not understanding what's going on here. I'm, I'm kind of lost. And this is a prime time right now to capitalize. And again, I'm not an exec. I haven't done the data research. I'm not as knowledgeable as any individuals, but I do know that eBay is still king when it comes to secondary market. I do know that there's other platforms that are that are struggling and, and eBay can definitely rise and pull all those people like the hundred dollar sneaker campaign where you pay no fees. That was excellent. That was great. I mean, it pulled a lot of people over. Right. And, and, it, and it's obviously going to help eBay a lot because even if they're not paying fees, there's a lot more eyes that are coming to eBay because of the sneakers coming over and those sellers most likely are selling other items that don't fit that their eBay is going to make profit on with fees or promoted listings or whatever that is. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there. So, all right, let's go with some good news. Let's hear it. Pirate ship is now using UPS and it's beautiful. So I have a personal story about this. All right, let's hear it. So I had an item that went to Canada and whatever reason it didn't make it through customs. I did my eBay listing. I did my eBay shipping through eBay. Uh, I didn't do global shipping on this one. I didn't do standard international delivery because I was trying to give them a good price. And it got kicked back to me. So then I'm like, oh, what I do now? eBay was great. <laughs> eBay, <laughs> eBay re- fought with, not didn't, but they messaged you know the post office and I was refunded the shipping amount because no one knows. Here's the thing. I go to the post office and I'm like, hey, why did this get sent back? It says return to sender. And they're like, oh, we don't know. I'm like what? They're like, let me get my supervisor. Supervisor comes out. They're like, could be because you just put toy on here and you didn't put exactly what kind of toy it was. It's like interesting. All right. Like there was no answers. But the nice thing is I went to pirate ship. And then when I went to pirate ship, it was when the UPS thing launched and it was cheaper. Here's the thing. I paid $72 to ship out this item uh, for priority international delivery. And it was going to make it in six to 10 days. Then when I went to the UPS on pirate ship, it was only going to be $62 and it was going to make it there in five to eight days Hmm. and insurance was included. So I don't know what kind of deal pirate ship has set up, but it was a pretty sweet deal. And here's a beautiful thing on eBay. When you print the label, have you ever done international where you have to like sign it and date it and all that? And it's like two forms, right? On pirate ship, it was just the one label. Now, I double checked 
the, the, the inconvenient thing about pirate ship is they have no phone resource. Like everything's over the chat, but you can send pictures. You can ask them and they're on it. They're like, Hey, ahoy Orlando. And I'm like, you know, I go back and forth. Arr. Yeah, no, I know. It's funny, but they, they helped me through the whole process and it was good and it was easy and uh, hopefully makes it there before this kid's birthday, this uh, toy that I sold. Uh, but you know, if, if you're looking for an alternative way to ship things at a good price, definitely check out, uh, pirate shipping UPS. I think it's going to be a game changer. Uh, this Q4, it's going to save you money too. All right. A uh, couple more things and then we're going to move on. <laughs> we talked about the cargo ships and we talked about all that, but people are buying Christmas things now. And by the way, be careful with your prices because you know, what was supposed to be transitory inflation, I don't think it's transitory anymore. Even the Fed has kind of had to admit that they're not seeing it outright, but the numbers aren't right. Yeah. I mean, when when you look around, I mean, here's the thing. You can you can read whatever you want about inflation, but the bottom line is when you buy stuff at the grocery store and you fill up your gas tank and you pay whatever you're paying for and you realize you're paying a lot more than you used to pay, your dollar is now worth less, right? Like it is what it is. And so we kind of have to deal with that. I wonder if the thunder made it onto the podcast. I don't think so. We just had a big thunder crack. It was really cool. I was teaching today um, and it started raining at my school and the kids like literally went running to the window. They're all screaming and yelling. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. So my son's in the other room. Hopefully you guys are picking up my son going, whoa, like to the thunder. But anyways, kind of making this podcast a little interesting here. So be aware that people are buying now. And the reason they're buying now, I think they're, that there's kind of a frenzy developing, right? You have the perfect storm where you have cargo ships off the coast of LA and Long Beach and maybe on the East Coast. They have a bunch of you know inventory for stores that aren't making it. At the same time, prices keep going up on items. And there's also the uncertainty of like, hey, what's going to happen in the next two, three months? You know, and, and you never know <laughs> if this, you know, huge bill that's, I don't know, are we 3.5 trillion, quadrillion? I don't think it matters anymore. Like I might as well get a photocopier and just print out my Monopoly money. But there may be money coming down the road for people to buy items for Q4. So I think Q4 is still going to be great. Check out our video that we just we just dropped it, right? Monday, our predictions for Q4, yep. right? And hopefully that helps you kind of navigate. Now, hopefully, you know, it's not financial advice, but I think it was, it was sound things that we said based on research and where everything's going. But I definitely do think that things are going to intensify. Even right now, Amazon, their FBA check-ins are really slow right now. Right. So what does that mean? That that means that you can either do merchant fulfilled, take advantage of that, or on eBay, you're going to get more traffic going to eBay because it's going to allow you to consistently sell more during that time. All right. Are we ready? Oh, we're ready. Well, we were ready, but it's getting, there we go. Oh man. Every time, but I can fix this fast. <laughs> okay. So this so, app, like I literally set up the sounds and then like they delete. So let me, app. let me throw in an ad while, while we try to sort this out. All right. Hey, one thing that has been consistent has been our smooth domes. So and, smooth. And so Skull Shaver has been great. Uh, some of you have messaged us and said, Hey, Rolando, Skull Shaver has worked out. Thanks for recommending it. And I got to tell you, it allows you to get that clean cut. Sometimes you're busy. You know, a lot of you, uh, I was DMing somebody the other day that works 40 hours a week and they're full time, not full time on eBay, but they feel like they're doing full time eBay. And it's like, you know, some things are hard to keep up, keep up. And you know what? One less thing you got to worry about is having a clean shaven head. And so if you haven't yet, go to schoolshaver.com and use our code pure hustle. You get that deal. You get that clean look. And it's one less thing to worry about. Again, schoolshaver.com. Promo code pure hustle. I like it. All right. Now we're ready. What's your bolo? Yeah. So what's your bolo? That was worth the wait. Uh, so mine is going to be a vague one because I have an actual specific item I'm uh, kind of looking for now, but the prices are already starting to skyrocket. So it's going to be tough. Uh, but, this came because my son has started watching. We have YouTube kids and we don't let him do it very often. We're very careful with what he watches because some of the stuff on there, I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, it's, it's so crazy. Like you never see it coming. Yeah. I mean, and the hard part is like, it's some things like kids playing, like live playing with each other. And then like they're being mean to each other. And it's like, I don't want like my son watching kids like 
being mean to each other and not respecting like their siblings like that's not okay or the prank thing yeah so like the drama that causes when a sibling it, it happens in my house where my son will pull a prank on on his brother and on youtube it was hilarious but in real life it's not hilarious yeah not so funny but um he was watching a show one of those like you know kid shows where like they're doing stuff playing things live action stuff <laughs> And um, there was a game that they were playing through and he became obsessed with it. He was watching videos on it and he was really interested in this game. It looks like a good game, kind of educational. And so we're like, sure. We looked up the price. It was like 14 bucks. And we're like, oh, this is easy. We'll just add this to your Christmas list, your birthday list, because his birthday is November. And he went to that party on this weekend and he told everybody about this game. Everybody was like, oh, nice. your birthday's coming up. What do you want? He's like, I want this game. And he kept talking about this game nonstop. So we had like five people like message us like, are you getting him this game? And we're like, yeah, we've already got it on his list. But, you know, you can buy it if you want. Well, we looked and the price is already up to like 60 bucks right now. And you wow. can't get them anywhere. And we were able to find one site that had them for like 20 bucks. So we ended up paying the 20. It's normally like a $13 game. But it's just amazing. And I think the reason it got that high is probably because of YouTube kids. Probably because these kids are playing this game and a bunch of kids liked it. It was a popular video and it took off. So my suggestion is if you have kids young enough, I would say probably in the like four to 10 range that are watching YouTube kids or YouTube videos, pay attention specifically to like what the popular toys and things are. And we've talked about that in the past, but this was where it would maybe get a little weird. Find a couple of the popular channels. And even if you don't have kids, just throw it on and see what toys and games get brought up a bunch of times. Just have it on the background when you're doing stuff. It's really annoying. And usually at the beginning, they'll say like paid yeah, a paid ad or they'll say paid by Mattel or whatever. And if you see that it's like a, a video that released recently in the last couple of weeks and it's already got a million views on it, probably a hot item. Yeah. And those kids videos have like 10 to 20, 30 million views. I mean, I look at some of these. I mean, I've been watching. So I have I have. I have two boys and at one time, I, you know, I had, I had a step kid and, and I got to tell you, like it, it's been consistent every single year for the last, I don't know, 15 years that most, not most, but a lot of the hot toys are on these YouTube videos. Right. And YouTube has been around for like 12 years or so. So yeah, that's, that's, that's a, it's a strategic bolo. Right. So, all right. So I, I was reminded the other day about this bolo. I again going back to that garage sale video, I came across and I don't know why no one picked it up, but vintage Bionicle, Lego Bionicle. Now I never, I don't know. I I bought Bionicle for my kids when they're young, and I didn't understand it. Like they were weird looking Legos and weird names, but there definitely is a market out there. Right? I, I've sold all kinds of Bionicle consistently all the time. Another one is like Lego friends. If you find discontinued Lego friends, there's a lot of money to be made and there's a lot of other discounted Lego. So, I mean, discounted, discontinued Lego out there to purchase. So not much discounted Lego. Yeah, no, they're not. Yeah. But you know, I I strongly encourage you like go on eBay and just type in discontinued Lego and just just go through the solds and, and just keep an eye because you never know when you're going to come across something at the thrift store. And you might look at the thrift store box and they may be charging 20 bucks for that Lego. And you're like, 20 bucks? I'm not paying 20 bucks. But I've had it before where I'm like, 20 bucks? Let me look this up. And it's real easy. Just put in Lego. You put in what number it is. And it's a it's something that sells 100 something dollars new or even used $100. And it's totally worth it to you, right? Um, Right now, I, I can't think of the name, but there's some people I follow on TikTok that they're Lego enthusiasts. And so they talk about sets that they bought like five years ago that now, and they talk about how much they're worth. And so I'm always watching these. So for example, one of the the biggest money makers is a Darth Maul Lego from like the early two thousands. Remember when the whole, you know, mm-hmm. non-canon movies came out. Uh, and there's a, there's a Darth Maul head that, that is money, like in the thousands and used if you find it. Right. Wow. So, so keep an eye, especially in this Q4, I really think because of the issue of supply chains and everything going on that people are going to be looking for toys that they can't necessarily get. And then when they can't find them, then they're going to go, you know what? I wonder what is something unique, something special I can get. And they're going to look for those discontinued Legos or I saw discontinued play mobile all the time. That thunder and lightning's kicking right now. We're San Diego, so yeah. all it needs to be is like a little boom, and we're like, oh man. Yeah, the world's coming to an end now. 
So if only our mic could have picked that up. People are like, what are you talking about? So I'll, any- I'll add some cool sound effects. So it sounds like <laughs> Thor has entered into the, the studio with Thor us. Thor has entered the chat. It's going to be like. <laughs> All right. So play some like ambient music, like kind of spooky in the background. So I strongly encourage you. Here, oh, I, you know what? Let me give you a story about my uncle. Since this is a really long podcast right now, I think. One of my biggest Lego sales was I picked up a whole bunch of Bionicle, all used. I, it was it was basically, you know, those big FBA boxes. Let's say it's a 24 by 18, 20 by 24, pretty large, pretty much filled with Bionicles. And on top of that, they, they had the little containers that each of the Bionicles came in. I paid $50 for all those Bionicles. I sold them for $550. So it's definitely... Bolo, do we just have a power glitch? I don't think so. Maybe I'm seeing things. If we shut down, you'll know what went down. Or oh, Mike's going to be a master at editing. You'll yeah, never know. You'll never know. So Maybe we did shut down and then we're just hiding the fact right now. True, true, true. <laughs> All right. What are you looking forward to, Mike? Uh, I'm looking forward to some more offer up. I think. Um, and you know what? I think I probably will remake. I haven't run my Craigslist ads in a while. I think I might rerun some Craigslist ads because uh, I was very successful with that when I was doing it. It was a lot to keep up with because I was getting messages all day long and maybe 80 percent, 90 percent of the messages. It's just like not worth it. You know, like people trying to sell, you know, one or two little things. It's not worth me picking up. So that can get a little bit challenging. Uh, But I think I'm going to give that a shot again and do offer up because I think we're moving into a season where garage sales are really going to slow down. Mm-hmm. And so I'd like to find a way to keep that that sourcing and that money coming in. Okay. What about you? What are you looking forward to? So I I do agree with you. I think garage sales probably I give it another month and they're going to slow down here. I find like a mid like October, mid November, it's I, I stay out. Now I'm getting to the place where I won't be going to garage sales anymore. So that's going to make things interesting for our Saturday drops. We'll see what I drop. So stay tuned. Make sure to hit that bell notification. But I got to tell you, the other day when I was sourcing for Amazon and things were selling within hours, the adrenaline rush was coming back. I had such a fantastic time last year. And maybe I'll drop the YouTube video. I put together a whole YouTube video on how I made all kinds of crazy money on a certain item. But I can't drop that video because if the item comes back, I, I just I can't have it kill the market. So... But I got to tell you, uh, it was just I am just shocked at how good the Amazon algorithm in its ranking is able to predict how quick things are going to sell. So generally, if you're wondering what I'm talking about, if it's under a thousand in ranking, it may sell at the height of Q4, let's say mid-November through mid-December. It will sell the moment you list it. Like it might take, you know, a couple minutes for somebody to see it, go through the payment process. But it will be instant. If it's under 10,000, it's going to be an hour or two, maybe three hours, and it will sell. The velocity is intense. The item I was selling last year, I think it was like a 34,000 rank, and it was within 15 minutes. Things would sell, things would sell, things would sell. And so I was feeling that adrenaline rush again. (laughs) I'm like, I love garage sales, but I also like the velocity of sales, right? Because... You know, you're making that profit. And again, I strongly encourage you find something that is not super returnable, I guess, Uh, because the item I sold last year, I didn't I I, every single return that I got, I just put it back on Amazon and I sold that and made my profit all over again. Mm. So so be on the lookout. And again, like I said before, I got to finalize my van plans. And I again, I have not made room for Q4 as far as I want to have a whole FBA shipping station space for all the inventory to just, you know, be able to back up the van or the trailer, you know, open up my storage and just have everything go in there and just tag everything, put them in a box and put it all back and just drop it off at UPS within hours of picking it up. So looking forward to that. All right. Hopefully uh, <laughs> if you weren't entertained, you learned. And if you didn't learn, you were inter- entertained or maybe both, or maybe this just helped you have some background sound while you do some listings and hear those chichings on your phone. Yeah. With that being said, make sure to be real, be relevant, and be reselling. Peace. Peace.